Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I address the body? Yes, sir. Last night, after our long debate on Senate Bill 5, I was going to my office, and some of my colleagues, Republican colleagues, were going to the office across the hall. And they referred to the 18, 18 of us who voted not to pass Senate Bill 5 as being derelicts, heretics, and that we didn't care about the children of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And there, there was anger. And I understand anger because sometimes I'm angry. But at the end of the day, we all are part of this body. And we all have to come here and we have to work together. And, and that was so divisive that it really concerned me, but I didn't say anything. I went in the office, got my things, and left. But there is such furor surrounding what it is that we do and the discourse that we have and the differences of opinion that we have on the issues that we face day to day. The gentleman from Breckenridge last night made eloquent statements and talked about 30 minutes about taking care of our kids and, and the responsibility we have to care for and love our kids. But some, somebody said last night that it's not about all of our kids. It's some of our kids that we're concerned with. This bill, House Bill 150, that, was, that came up today, kind of out of the clear blue sky, and we were not notified about as Democrats, or members of the, of the committee, of the Education Committee. We just happened to see it, and somebody notified us, and we showed up in the meeting and, 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 and made our feelings known about what was happening or, or about the committee meeting. There were a number of comments you made last night quotes from the Bible. I don't, I don't profess to be a theologian or a student of the Bible, but someone sent me a Bible quote this afternoon. And it's Romans 15, 7. And it says, therefore accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. We are making differences with people in this commonwealth. And it's not fair, it's not right. I'm sitting here looking at these young people and they're looking at me. And, and, and understand that God made each and every one of them in who they are, some big, some small, some black, some white, some, some bald headed, some red hair, some blonde hair. But God loves each and every one of us and it is important for all of us that are elected officials here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky to stand up and speak to the issues that concern all of our children, not some of our children. And the statement was made by my colleague from Jefferson about children leaving our state. I am very selfish about children being in our state and, and, and providing the opportunity for them to stay in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We've made a serious investment in the education of our young people. And some of our young people will leave because of, of, of the draconian backward thinking that we have in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Some of our children will leave because there are better opportunities in other places around the country and around the world. But we are the ones that lose. The gentleman from Todd talks about return on investment all the time. And I've just been on the A&R committee, but return on investment is, is the ROI, that's the return on the investment that we've made in our children. If we put something in, I think we have to be selfish enough to want something back. And what we're doing in, 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 in structuring the climate in the Commonwealth of Kentucky is that we are narrowing it to the point that people cannot stay. Some people cannot stay. If they're different, they cannot stay and live in our state going forward and making the contributions that we have invested in for them to make for our state. So it was heart wrenching in the committee meeting, in the education committee, as we discussed Senate Bill 150. 
Some colleagues came and were there for support, but none of us knew about it. We were in, a, we were in another part of the building, and we happened to walk in, and, and, and the committee was just calling the roll, and we had not received official notification of, of the meeting. The thing is, is that if you're right, if the legislation is right, then let's do it in the light of day, not under the cover of darkness, not in secrecy, but that everybody knows and understands what the rules are because we can't play the game. You can't play the game if you don't know the rules. So what we have here is another surprise to the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. The people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky have not seen Senate Bill 150. They have not seen it. It is not something that they've had input in. And we're bringing it in on the, the third, two days left in the session. We're going into the veto period starting tomorrow. And we will not be back here until the 29th of this month. And then we'll have sine die on the 30th. Is that fair to the citizens of the Commonwealth of Kentucky? We talk about the needs and concerns of parents and why it's important that we love our children and we're trying to save them. We have not given them any time to prepare for this. And it's what it appears to me is that we want to pass this piece of legislation so badly that we're going to do it under the cover of darkness. We're going to make sure that the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky do not have time to respond to the issues and concerns that are raised in this bill. And it's so. We got this sub today at, at, at like 1 o'clock, 1.15. And the meeting was already underway by the time we got there. We didn't have time to read the sub. We didn't have time to know what was in it. We just got it. But we are talking about making a decision that will be in the best interest, so we say, or the detriment for the children of the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the parents are given a say-so on the back end. We, we say that parents are important in what happens to the children and that they should have the opportunity and the right to determine what happens to their children. I can only speak for me, and I, and I, and I know that my mother transitioned 30 years ago, but my mother would be incensed with this bill and what this bill says and does to our children. She would not have been happy at all and she would have let everybody that was in earshot understand and hear that. And I think that as we talk about what happens in this body and that we talk about rules, we talk about protocol, this is not right, Mr. Speaker. This is not right, members of this house. Members on this floor, this is not right. And it will be proven out at some point because understand that once on top one day we'll be on the bottom and that we have to understand that you will not always have the majority it was said last night that the majority of the people in this body have the ability to decide what happens to the citizens of the commonwealth of kentucky yeah you do right now i may not live to see it but you will not always have the majority and it is incumbent upon you, it is incumbent upon you to do the right thing as it relates to your majority for the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And if you do not, there will be a day of reckoning. And as those that are theologians and those that quote the Bible understand that God is watching, there is a God that sits high and looks low. And God does not like ugly. So as we understand and look at and deal with what is happening, search your hearts. Search your hearts and think about your situation as I just explained mine. We had a conversation this morning talking about coal in eastern Kentucky and the passion that eastern Kentuckians have about, have about coal. Our colleague, former colleague in this house from Letcher County said to me, the problem with eastern Kentucky and coal, and I didn't talk about it, but what she said is that we didn't think in eastern Kentucky soon enough to diversify. And, and, and is that someone else's fault? Because see, understand that coal and fossil fuels burning in America, and if we're paying attention, 
Climate change is, is, is right here, right now. And if we think coal is coming back, we may not have a country. The, the ice packs on the North Pole are melting. John and, 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 limit your, your comments to the matter before the body, which is House Committee Substitute 1. It's all germane, Mr. Speaker, I think. I think that, that as we talk about everything that we're talking about, all of it, all of it meshes together. It's like, it's like soup. It's got the broth. It's got the meat. It's got the potatoes. It's got the vegetables, the other vegetables. So you, gotta call, you can't look at this as, as being somehow separate and apart. General Fayette, limit your comments to the matter before the body, which is House Committee Substitute 1. All right, Mr. Speaker, I, I, will, I will close my comments with what I started them with. Romans 15, 7. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes the lady from Jefferson 40.